Good morning. I would like to thank the moderators and the college for the invitation to speak today. I have no disclosures. Uh, this year, many Americans will have surgery to create a stoma and again next year and the year after. And these patients have a higher rate of perioperative complications. And the true morbidity of having a stoma is related to both the ostomy complications as well as the quality of life issues that the patient experiences. And we can help prepare our patients for stoma surgery and help improve their outcomes. The importance of a trained wound ostomy continence nurse cannot be emphasized enough. Uh, these are specialty nurses who train in a one-year program with both uh, practical and didactics uh, for certification. And their pre-op education increases a patient's sense of competency with their stoma, which helps decrease complications, especially those related to skin issues and early pouching. Um, and increased competency decreases depression, it uh, decreases marital and work stress, and it creates less emotional problems for the patient. And even if not available preoperatively, try to connect the patient with a certified stoma nurse postoperatively. One is usually available at, at every major medical center, referrals can be made, and even postoperative education, specifically seeing a stoma nurse in the hospital, can help the patients adjust quicker to having the stoma. And if one is not available, if a stoma nurse is not available, we're gonna talk about some things that we can help to get the job done. What do we do in the absence of these trained professionals? Are patients doomed to more complications and uh, lower quality of life? The goal of this talk really is to discuss some tips and tricks to help empower us um, to take on this role when we need to. And the education and planning that we provide um, is invaluable to our patients. There's no doubt to the validity of this slide. Ultimately, we're trying to uh, create the best outcome for our patients, and that's really what we want. When we're planning the stoma, we need to take into account the patient's physical considerations, including the patient's shape, their skin folds, do they have a pendulous abdominal wall, do they have pendulous breasts that may get in the way, do they have arthritis, paresthesias from chemotherapy, do they have vision problems, do they have cognitive delays. We also need to take into account positional considerations, does the patient have contractures, is the patient wheelchair bound, uh, we also need to take into account the patient factors, including cosmesis, the patient's preference for location, the type of clothing, where does it sit? Does the patient go to work every day? What kind of work do they do? What do they do for fun? Are they long distance runners, et cetera? And finally, what we want as surgeons is last and arguably less important. In the absence of a trained stoma nurse, we need to educate our patients on how to utilize their pouching system and help them troubleshoot pouching issues. And this gets easier the more we do it. Um, we need to support our patient and let them know that their life will remain largely unchanged and reassure them of this often. We need to gauge whether or not the patient would benefit from having conversations and meeting other estimates because we need to make this available if that's what they need. And most of this education should take place within a week of surgery in order to maximize retention. I think we all can agree that it was probably, it's very easy to cite a stoma on a patient like this. This is a 41 year old male with a BMI of 21. But what about these patients? How do we help maximize their outcomes? This patient has a BMI of 62. You may be able to see my rudimentary markings of her midline, her costal margin, and even a potential stoma site in the right upper abdomen. She was very short, and the distance between her costal margin and the anterior superior iliac spine was quite limited. This patient has an incarcerated peristomal hernia um, and was in need of reciting. 
She was marked preoperatively by our stoma nurse, as you can see here. Marking preoperatively is the most important thing we can do to ensure proper stomal placement. And proper stomal placement will decrease morbidity. Always mark the patient in multiple positions. Sitting in a chair with the feet flat on the ground is most important as it will reveal any abdominal folds. Uh, place more than one mark and check them again and move around in alternative positions before finalizing the placement of the marks. Our patients who have um, mobility issues or other impairments, they need to bring somebody with them to their appointments and they need to bring somebody with them who's going to help learn how to care for the pouch. It's imperative to avoid any surface that is not flat when making the mark. Stay away from surgical scars, creases, bony prominences, other stomas. Always ask the patient, where does your clothing sit? Um, especially the waistline of the pants where the undergarments are. Lower is usually more cosmetic, especially for younger patients, um, but be mindful that most problematic stomas are sited too low. So higher is best when in doubt. And obese, obese patients have more difficulty pouching. We have more difficulty making their stoma. We need to mark these patients preoperatively in order to maximize a good outcome. And this is a, this is a look at what we're trying to avoid. This is the umbilicus on the left and to the, directly to the right of it in the picture is a stoma sitting in a skin fold. And you can see how this would be problematic for pouching and, and even the best stoma nurse is gonna have difficulty with this one. And proper education and marking can help reduce the likelihood of skin issues like the one pictured here. This schematic is borrowed um, to show you how to mark a patient with a larger abdominal wall. And there are numerous resources out there for surgeons. This is taken from a position statement between the Wound Ostomy Continence Nurse Society and the American Society of Colon and Rectal Surgeons. This shows that we need to be aware that not every patient can see their entire abdomen. And the sight lines are important in helping the patient develop uh, proficiency with their pouch. Um, and again, a flat surface is a must. This patient has a flat surface above the umbilicus. As you can see, it's marked on both the left and right as the optimal location for him. Ultimately, if a patient cannot see uh, where their stoma is placed, they can learn to manage it in a mirror, but a flat surface is vital to pouching success. These are some uh, images of a patient um, in the top and bottom left, uh, sitting in a chair with the feet flat on the ground in the top right, lying supine, and in the bottom right, standing. The abdomen is pendulous. Uh, there are folds when sitting. There's even a coker incision in the right upper quadrant. And what this shows is that the abdominal wall in larger individuals is dynamic and it changes from position to position. And all of these positions need to be observed when marking the patient. So the wafer is placed to help guide the marking and then rechecked in all positions before the optimal location is chosen. And I usually make at least two marks, sometimes up to four marks on the patient. And this happens from time to time. I didn't mark the patient. Uh, it was an emergency. I was called for an intraoperative consult. Now what? And, and the best case scenario is a laparoscopic case where the midline is not disrupted and you can desufflate and place a mark for your stoma. During open surgery, when the midline is disrupted, it can be difficult to select a good location, especially in larger individuals. And in this case, go to the upper abdomen uh, for a safer place. Once we get used to marking our patients um, regularly, and um, if that's something that we have to do, we find that it doesn't take very long. It can take five minutes and can be done efficiently even in urgent circumstances in preoperative holding. Um, any layout of the folds, any idea of where the clothing sits is better than guessing during surgery. And we have a lot of opportunities to do this and we need to take advantage of them. So in conclusion, utilize the stoma nurse whenever available. I cannot emphasize this enough. They are invaluable to patients' um, success with their pouches. 
Um, we know a lot about stomas, usually more than the patient, and we need to talk to our patients perioperatively about their stoma issues, and we need to learn more ourselves so that we can teach our patients and empower them. Remember, mark the patient in multiple positions, always on flat surfaces, avoiding creases, scars, and other stomas and clothing lines, et cetera. And again, utilize the stoma nurse. Thank you.